Hello, everybody. Welcome back to If Plants Could Talk. This is Garrett. I'm your host. This conversation took place on May 21st, 2024, with my very special returning guest, Zach of Atacan Farms. Zach is a longtime collector and grower of cactus and succulent, but recently actually gave away the majority of his collection. I think he said it was like a truckload that he gave away to somebody that could better care for them while he's on this self-care and hero's journey. He's been alchemizing some darkness into light and really facing some struggles, you know, and it was a really eye-opening conversation because uh, we did talk a lot about gardening and plants, but then Zach shared something really personal and it made me realize that, you know, when you're interacting with people online or even in this conversation leading up to the point that he told that story, you never know what somebody's going through just by looking at them or in your interactions with them. And uh, Zach shared something really personal about a suicide attempt and substance abuse. So just proceed with caution. Maybe if you identify with this conversation and, you know, you relate or have been through something similar consider reaching out to him and, and saying hello, say, sending some love, you know. It was really awesome to, to catch up with him and have him on again, and I hope you guys enjoy. I want to take a moment to tell you guys about my sponsors and partnerships. If you scroll down into the description of this episode, you will find links to Mezcala Nursery located in Long Beach, California, Green Touch Nursery located in Bellflower, California, Big shout out to Plantly.io. You can type in Plantly.io into your web browser or download the free Plantly app on Android or iOS. If you are interested in becoming a vendor, I have provided a link for you to do so down in the description. Next up is Real Mushrooms. Real Mushrooms is a mushroom supplement company offering hot water extracts in both powder and capsule form. You may be familiar with all of these amazing mushrooms and their health benefits like lion's mane, chaga, reishi, shiitake, maitake, cordyceps. All these mushrooms that have been used in Chinese herbal medicine for thousands of years. If you are interested in learning more, maybe check out my episode with Jeff Chilton or scroll down and click the link, head to Real Mushrooms. And if you're going to make a purchase, type in code if plants could talk at checkout and you will get 10% off your order. Next up is PlantWave. PlantWave is a device that translates the electrical frequencies or patterns that your plant creates. In other words, the water moving through your plant creates an electrical frequency and that is then translated into sound and melodies using the PlantWave app and the PlantWave device. You hook up two electrodes to your plant or perhaps mushroom and you can tune out of the world and tune into your plants. Here's a little video of some plant music for you. If you're ready to make a purchase, you can use my link. There is no code necessary and you will get $20 off your plant wave device. And last but not least, we have Bagus Botanicals. Bagus Botanicals is a supplement company offering a wide variety of different types of Metragena speciosa or Kratom. One of their products, my favorite product, is called Flow State and it's made out of lion's mane, ginseng, and Metragena speciosa. They recently released a bunch of new products. They've got some white mang da, a green mang da. They've got some powder and capsules available. So if you're ready to make a purchase, click my link, type in code if plants could talk at checkout, and you will get 25% off your order. All right, here is Zach. Zach of Atacan Farms, welcome back to If Plants Could Talk. How are you today, brother? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm doing well, man. Doing well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. How, Hanging in there. <laughs> what's, what's been going on with you uh, since the last time I, I talked to you? Uh, what's been growing metaphorically, physically, all that? Um, uh, I mean, as far as plants, dude, I've been, um, I kind of actually got rid of my plants, like all my, um, I had like maybe 10 flats, like a pickup truck load that I had taken over to, um, do you know Jeremy's bath by chance? Hidden Agave? Mm, I'm familiar. Yeah. Okay. So I took, he's got a really amazing greenhouse and just grow operation, um, at his place. And, um, I just haven't had like the space or the time really to, um, I guess give my plants the care that I know they need, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, so I brought them all over to him, um, just a, like about a month or so ago. And, um, I've kind of just been like focusing on growing things from seed. It's okay. a lot more manageable for myself. Um, just like the amount, you know, and like the space it takes up and stuff like that too. Um, so like, you know, Ariocarpus, Copiapoa, um, aloes, things of that nature, you know? Nice. Um, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, growing from seed is, is very, um, mm, I'm trying to think of what's the word. 
it's like satisfying, you know, to like watch it um, grow. It's cool. Yeah, at your own hands, right? From from being from the very first day. Yeah, for sure. That's wicked, man. What 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 exactly inspired that? Besides, for like, so was it solely because you felt like you couldn't give them the care that they needed? Were they suffering at all? Like, are you just so busy? You you changed jobs or something recently, right? Um, yeah, well, I've been with the state since like January or so. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, man, I, I like, I needed to work on myself, you know, and like, it's hard to care for, um, other people or other things when like, you're not where you should be, you know? And, um, I guess I recognized that and kind of wanted to just like pursue more like self-care and, um, not have so many things to necessarily be, um, like worried about you know yeah i mean and you had some like obscurities right some rarities obscurities maybe things that needed like a little more attention or love for sure dude yeah and so like not having like a greenhouse for example or just like you know a cover over my plants during all the winter rains that we get over here um it just it wrecked like <laughs> literally thousands of dollars worth of plants dude and it's um it's kind of like depressing to watch that happen too you know sure um Yeah. And like, you know, by the time I get like an older plant, like a mother plant, you know, it's typically 20 years, 30, 50 years old. And um, to just like ruin all that is <laughs> it's kind of a bummer too. you know, like that's somebody's time and energy as well. Yeah, bro. Um, yeah. That makes So sense. I wanted to give them off to a better home for sure. And then, um, yeah, just to be able to like focus on myself more as well. Yeah, that's totally understandable. Uh, I Yeah. thankfully don't, I've sold off all of my more valuable or expensive plants, which are mostly like loaves or aerial carpets, um, or some other things too, like some imports and stuff. And I sold all that off so I could move. Um, but, uh, I've struggled with the same thing. The last two winters have been super gnarly. super gnarly like Dude, terrible. pounding fucking rain and i lost Yeah. so much shit to rot like so much shit, Same. you know so i feel that dude um Yeah, man. It's a bummer to go out there and just see like <laughs> the suffering, you know? yeah <laughs> dude i yeah. keep having to go out there and like recut shit and starting now now it's just like it's it's better but like the over the winter as the winter ended i kept going out like mostly calmer And it'd rot and it recut it and then rot again and recut it. <laughs> but I don't really, I'm in a tiny space, dude, so I can't really bring stuff inside. Uh, I do have a grow light. I guess I could do that with like a lo with loaves or stuff. But mostly now I've been focusing on more like native plants and growing from seed a little bit too. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. but I've really gotten into the to the indigenous plants and kind of tending whatever's here, which you know is a combination of indigenous and and invasive plants, and. Uh, There's a lot to tend on the land itself and then keeping a little garden bed, poppies and then cannabis too. I've been practicing Nice. cannabis, man. But Yeah, I did grow um, cannabis for a good chunk of time. And um, for me, just how it's so like regimented, you know, and like at certain stages, you got to do this, that or the other. It was kind of um, it wasn't so fun to me as it is to grow like cactus or what have you. Um, yeah, just like the scheduled, like you need to do things at this time and then do it this, you know, certain way. And it's just too... structured for me i guess i enjoy the freedom of um just letting plants do their thing you know I feel that completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I probably don't follow the guidelines that that cannabis needs, but you know, mm. just feed them every once in a while and yeah it's harvesting and, and preparing it. It's a pain in the ass, but it's all for personal use, not necessarily for me, but my, my girlfriend last season I harvested and it lasted her like until pretty recently. really <laughs> like, oh wow that's great dude yeah, she's smoking on that shit for, for a long ass time. Um, but nice I'm not currently smoking myself. What about oh you? cool Do you engage in any, Thing like yeah that. yeah yeah dude i used to like smoke like all day but um recently like i just i've lost the desire dude like Yeah. i went um yeah like typically i'd like wake up and like have a cup of coffee and be like all right like it's time for like a bong load or whatever you know Mm -hmm. and um i don't have like that desire anymore um for whatever reason like i never made like a conscious decision to be like cutting back or like It's like you a know phase anything or something. Yeah. maybe maybe i don't know man um I, I can't put my finger on it um like i was at work last night and i was you know just working and then i i was like dude i don't think i've smoked today and then like i you know i thought about my day i was like oh shit dude i haven't smoked all day Yeah. and um 
I, I didn't like, again, make the conscious decision to do that. So it was just like strange, I guess, you know, for me anyways. Yeah. Personally, I, I would like to smoke. Uh, my job, <laughs> my job doesn't really uh, permit it. You know, they're, it's, yeah. it's kind of frowned upon in, in the treatment world, but uh, uh, I, I could probably get away with it. And then also I, I'm like, I have a, another outside reason that I have to maintain clean urine right now so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so there's that but uh yeah. yeah i mean i don't think i'm supposed to partake with my job sure. um like i had to pass like a drug test and a background you know uh, check and all that shit to get um hired with the state um so yeah <laughs> that's a badass job dude congrats on that because i like you, you. you get a pension eventually if you stay with them yeah well so that's yeah. that was really my whole like goal dude was to get the retirement um because you know the cost of living in san diego is so just insane man that there's no yeah. way that i could maintain my current life and then also like plan for the future financially you know mm -hmm. um so i looked at it as an opportunity to like be able to have a solid plan for the future you know with the retirement and stuff yeah. um so yeah i'm pretty stoked on it as well thank you for the uh congratulations of course man uh so we were talking about i wanted to ask you something yeah earlier what are you growing from seed um a lot of ario carpus um I copiapoa aloes uh yeah all good um astrophytum uh i really enjoy like so how you mentioned you're working with like natives and things of that nature um so in socal we have what's what's a mediterranean climate sure um okay. there's only five places in the world um other well including here that have a mediterranean climate so i'm trying to kind of go with those plants and work with our nature instead of against it now yeah um so like you know south africa australia chile here and then there's one other place that i'm forgetting that all have the mediterranean climate mediterranean itself probably right um oh yeah duh, that makes sense dude <laughs> okay, man. Okay, yeah that's I hilarious <laughs> i mean i would think so you know yeah. I, I would have to look it up to be sure but i mean that makes sense you know yeah. um so you know like um copiapoa for example grow in chile so that's you know good for our mediterranean climate mm. um ariocarpus um they're in north america but more like you know mexico and like texas and stuff like that so they don't do that well over here yeah. unfortunately yeah. um yeah so like aloes you know are from south africa as well so they do great in our climate um so i'm trying to focus on that as well um but just trying to like work more with nature instead of against it um really yeah like trying to to have a plant that's that's not like uh acclimated to this environment and trying to keep it alive correct yeah like i don't want to i don't want to put it at risk as much as i can you know like i want to give it the best chance of life that i that i can provide it yeah man yeah that makes sense i i admire the people that have like a vast variety collection and they're able to keep everything alive and it's just like they all have different needs and yeah i mean that's that's a huge challenge and it, i imagine it occupies a lot of your time yeah big working time. at night you're probably exhausted in the daytime um sometimes sometimes um yeah it just depends on how much sleep i get you know during the day like I'd usually come home and like when I'm coming home, the kids are getting up for school. So I'll make them breakfast. And then when they take off, I'll just go crash out, you know, for a few hours and kind of just start it all over again when I'm up. Yeah, bro. So what else has been going on? Any other hobbies? Actually, I've seen you've been adventuring a little bit going. Oh, through, yeah. Yeah. Going yeah, to the man. truck. It's all baja out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a pretty wild story how like I came across the truck dude um so like after my birthday my 30th birthday i was taking my kids to school um and um some dude said i had cut him off and he threw a hot cup of starbucks coffee through my open driver's side window oh, hell no. <laughs> and yeah <laughs> and my my older daughter was sitting in my passenger seat dude and it went right past my face and struck her bam hot cup of coffee coffee goes flying everywhere kids in the back screaming kids in the front screaming you know i'm trying to like drive and figure out what's going on and of course i'm pissed off at this dude and um amongst the whole commotion dude i like i mistook the gas i'm the brake for the gas and so instead of slamming on the brake i slammed on the gas 
And I fucking, bam, slammed right into the back of this dude. He, it was uh, like a Honda Civic or whatever. And, um, you know, was I made sure like- the dude that threw it at you or a different car? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was the dude who threw it at me, fortunately. Oh, good. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he like, dude, so there was three lanes. I was going from the third lane to the middle lane. And he, there was all this room, obviously, because he passed me on the left-hand side, you know, so there was no need for the whole interaction, dude. And um, prior to working for the state, I worked for the city, and I was driving, like, a city truck all over. And, you know, city workers are notorious for driving slow. You know, you have to be safe. Mm. And um, I drive slow as hell, dude, so there was no, like, no need for any of this, like I said, interaction with this gentleman, you know. And, um but so anyways, I slammed in the back of this dude and like I made sure that my kids were okay. And I just I just saw red and dude and I just like pulled up and just pop, 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 you know, just started wailing <laughs> on the guy. <laughs> oh man. And um he like he was like, help me, help me. It was this whole scene, you know, and I I realized oh, obviously wow. in the moment, like this is not something I should be doing, you know. So I I backed off and um long story short dude i got like a uh ins insurance payment for the like the balance of my vehicle you know mm -hmm. it was pretty shitty because like my last payment would have been in like three or four months after the the crash and i would have had my whole vehicle paid off Fuck. um but <laughs> but i got a check for like nine nine grand or eight grand something like that okay. and um since i was a kid i've always wanted a little toyota truck just like that and um I went over to my mechanic for some reason. I forget what it was. Oh, I had a I had a van over there. You, I, I don't know. You may have seen my old van, um, but he had been storing it for me for a while. And I wanted to sell that and kind of just move on from the van. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, hey, I got this little truck for sale. And my eyes just like lit up, dude. You know, just it was like exactly what I had always like uh, imagined as a kid. That's sick. Um, but it was all clapped out like it wasn't all um, like I got a lift on it. I got new wheels, tires and like I dropped a shit ton of money, like way more than I should have, um, like getting it back to like off road, you know, yeah. capabilities. Yeah. And um, but it was just like something like I, I'm able to like live my dream out, you know, so I just took the opportunity to do it. And um, yeah, I've just been cruising ever since, dude. It's really, like, peaceful to get out to, like, you know, Borrego and just there's nobody around and just, you know, be in nature. And um, it's quite a capable vehicle. Um, yeah. So I can kind of just get wherever, dude. You know, it's really uh, it's really cool. Sounds like a little blessing in disguise then. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, – I had already been, like, thinking about, all right, I want a truck and I want to do this and that. And so it just kind of all forced it to, to happen Faster, I guess. I, I don't know, man. It, the cards fell where they fell, you know? How far are you from Anza Borrego? Um, so I'm in North County, like Carlsbad area. Um, it takes like two, two and a half hours, depending on how fast you drive um, to get out there. Cool. And then like which section of Borrego you're going to as well, because it gets pretty deep, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that place is fine. And then I've gone up, there's, um, it's called Nate Harrison grade road, which goes <laughs> up Palomar mountain. And it's just a straight dirt road. And, um, it's got some like spicy history. The dude who made it was like a, a indentured servitude or slave, whatever you want to call it mm. back in the day. And, um, it was his road. Like that was his service road, you know, and that's why they call it that. Um, but it's um it's pretty enjoyable to go up, dude. It's really like a steep incline the whole time, and um really like you know you've got the pine trees and whatnot. So it's a it's a cool drive, dude. I highly recommend it to is anybody. The truck who a has four it. banger. Um, four cylinder. Yeah, or a four like is uh, it manual. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a stick stick shift. It's two wheel drive, but it's a four cylinder, so it's yeah. the smaller engine. Um, that's fun though. That's, that's yeah, fun. fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Dropping four cylinder climbing a fucking hill yeah <laughs> i love that shit yeah it's it's sick dude i really enjoy it it's um it's cool there's something more raw about driving a manual transmission car especially when you're like out in the wild and and for sure just on the open road man and it's uh very liberating i i need to get on the road myself i went out like maybe a month ago but i'd like to go do something again what kind of uh species of plant are you observing out there um so dude Oh, so there's Elephant Tree Discovery Trail, um, which is Bursar of Microphyla. Sick. Um, what's that? I said sick. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, dude, my dumbass, I don't know what's wrong with me. I've never been able to find the plant. I've never been able to see the tree. Like, I've, <laughs> I've gone out there, like, three different times, dude. 
and to the specific trail where it's like known for, you know, and I don't know if I'm not going deep enough or I'm just like, I don't know, not paying attention, but I can never um, come across it, mm. which is okay. Cause it gives me another reason to go back, you know? So no, <laughs> no big deal. Um, but a lot of like um, Opuntia basilaris, mm. like the beaver tail cactus, which I really love that plant, dude. It's, you know, flat, blue paddle and then the flowers are just this like most vibrant pink that you'll come across dude it's it's so trippy to see in the middle of such a barren like wasteland you know such like beauty um yeah. out, out of the sand dude it's it's bizarre it's really cool i'll have to pull that one up you said beaver yeah tail. yeah check them out dude i i really love that plant man um opuntia basilaris um it's a really good one and then there's a uh, pharaoh cactus cylindricaeus or um they changed the name to like Akanathodes or some something like that. Latin's a bitch. I can't always pronounce them. Mm. Um, there's yeah, there's the pharaoh cactus out there, and then um, Focaria. There's the Focaria uh, splendus or whatever Ocotillo, you know, mm -hmm. um, which are really cool to see. Like flower, they have like a really bright like orange reddish flower, and typically it's pretty high winds out there, so you see them just like you know dancing around in the wind and whatnot. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Most people go out there for um you know like the wildflowers or whatever. Yeah, they had like a super bloom this year, yeah. Yeah, I think again or something like that. It doesn't necessarily fire my rocket as much as like cacti does. Sure. Um but it's still beautiful to see, man. Um again, something so like, you know, majestic coming out of such a barren area. It's, it's pretty bizarre. Most definitely. Yeah. You're into Dudley too, right? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you guys have some of those around you um yeah man um so i'm not sure if you're familiar with josh um allen is his last name josh allen not the uh i think that's a basketball player too but fairview plants mm, um no. he he goes around um checking out dudleya and he and i went into box canyon in carlsbad mm -hmm. and um found there's i think he said there's only three locations where it grows and that was one of them um but dudleya visita Okay. Um, which, um, so box Canyon is like all sectioned off and you can't necessarily enter it, but we just didn't see the signs I'm going to say, and walked on down there. And, um, there's like constant water going through there all year long. Um, so there's like a Creek, you can hear it. It's really like peaceful. And, um, the, I don't know, it's like just vertical cliff sides, you know, and they're all just growing through there, man. It's, it's a crazy sight to see. Um, yeah, for sure, dude. Um, so it was cool to like be able to experience such a rare plant, you know, and especially in like my backyard. It's a trip, dude. For sure. And, like, it, it is, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that Pulverenta grows in the same area as well. And like okay. Edulis. Yeah. I was yeah, going to yeah. say, you, you might have told me last time, but do you have like a particular species that, that you really feel close to or connected to? Uh, of Dudleya? Of any plant um Whether that's observing it or if that's like cultivation well so in like high school my buddy told me about like san pedro mm. and um many people use it as just like a landscape plant in the desert and um are really unaware of like it's like spiritual abilities and you know what it like what it means to like that culture um yeah. and so you know we used to go chop it down and like eat it all the time and um <laughs> yeah just out of like people's yards too dude which who knows they could have been using pesticides or like you know what i mean it could have just been really bad <laughs> <laughs> sure but um I'm, I'm still here you know um yeah. but so i feel really close to like that plant um especially with like grafting and stuff too mm -hmm. um i've had great success using san pedro um as like rootstock mm -hmm. and um that's kind of like what um got me back into cactus mm -hmm. um was just like those memories you know and like yeah i don't know so san pedro i feel kind of close to and it's funny because i don't really grow any of it but um yeah weird right um i just don't have the space dude like they're you know they're large plants yeah man. um and when i when i was doing like the cannabis um when i worked at the farm the um the owner there had his whole driveway lined with san pedro dude it was it was so cool to see 
on like each side, you know, it was just like going through a driveway of them. Um, it was really cool. And we bonded over that as well. Yeah, that's always a special way to connect with somebody. You're like, you like San Pedro, you know? Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's different. It's not like, oh, you like mushrooms? You know, there's something yeah. special about it, you know? For sure. Yeah, man. I mean, like, with mushrooms, you kind of only have, like, one or two uses of them, right? Like, you're going to eat them or, like, you're going to eat them. Like, that's really all you're going to do, you know? Like, you're not yeah. growing them for beauty. Um, but when it comes to San Pedro, like, you know, a lot of people, like I said, just have them in their yard and they have the most like amazing huge white flower too you know which is really yeah. cool to see really underrated blooms for sure definitely man definitely you know, they don't last long and yeah yep. yeah they like uh serious peruvianus as well Dude, have a really great love bloom <laughs> i love that yeah. i love that uh glaucus blue farina on some of those peruvianus oh, yeah. man and then the crusted ones too, wicked plant, dude. And then yeah. the night blooms, and they go off sometimes. It's like fireworks on those things. Yeah, they'll like push Definitely. out ten blooms at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great plant. Yeah, and that's another like commonly used one in um, landscape, like in the desert as well. Yeah, and the fruits are really good too. Actually, they're sweet. I've never eaten them. Are they really? If you put them in the freezer, I never realized you're. There's kind of like eating a dragon fruit. It's like yeah the, the skin you, you leave alone but you eat the inside with the seeds and if you put it yeah. in the freezer it's like a fucking sorbet it's delicious really? oh like shit spoon and scoop it out and, and huh. eat it. it's like a sorbet it's so i'm gonna good. have to try that out dude yeah, yeah. yeah pretty good so what were those early experiences of san pedro like <laughs> <laughs> um i would usually like so there's obviously more than one way to crack a nut right so you can you can boil it down. You could like chop it into pieces. You could like dry them out. Um, so we would typically like make it in like three or four different ways um, and like eat it all at the same time. You know, it's not the most, um, it doesn't taste good, you know? So like <laughs> whatever method you can use to get it down is kind of what we just, you know, um, went with. And um, it was really like, it's spiritual, I guess, is the only way that I could, like, describe it. Sure. Like, you can just feel, like, um, or for me, anyways, I felt really connected with, like, my surroundings and, like, just nature in general. Yeah, um, yeah and I guess that feeling's kind of never really left me ever since then, um, like, the connection with nature, you know? Uh -huh. um, psychedelics have a weird way of kind of for me anyways, clearing out in my head things that I don't necessarily need in my life mm. and then refocusing me on things that are important and not necessarily from like a societal standard, but for like a quality of life perspective, I guess is a good way to put it. Um, Cause I was really like in the corporate world for a good chunk of time and like, you know, working in an office and like I had, three computer screens and would walk into like 400 emails and stuff like that. And, um, I fried pretty hard <laughs> on some mushrooms and, um, just kind of came to the conclusion like afterwards that what I was doing wasn't like for me, you know, it yeah. wasn't enjoyable. I was like wasting my life away. I wasn't able to like get outside and do shit. And, um, I just walked away from it one day and just pursued plants, man. And, um, I, I miss the money, but I don't regret doing, you know, making that decision of, of leaving my career and pursuing plans. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, there's a lot, you know, long story short, there's a lot more in my opinion to life aside from money, you know, and like, For sure. uh, um, keeping up with the Joneses and like that whole thing just doesn't, it doesn't play a part in my life anymore, you know, and I've been so much more at peace with myself because of that, you know, not like comparing myself to others and like just enjoying what I think is really important in life. Yeah, I would rather struggle a little more and have more intimate time with my family, you know, right. if that's what it, if that's what the trade off is, if I'm going to get more time, especially while they're young, you know. Yeah. It's, for sure it can always return to like a hardcore grind later on in life you know as yeah dude money comes and goes opposite of what people do but you know what i mean i'd rather be present uh, like our parents generation the uh, 
most of us, I'm sure, experienced our parents being out of the house most of the time working, right? Grinding and, yeah. and providing for us. And that's uh, financial, providing financially isn't enough to say like you're doing a good job raising kids, right? <laughs> No. Yeah. I mean, that's only yeah. a, a, you know, it's a large part of it. Don't get sure. me wrong. Like you have a roof over your head and food on the yeah. table, but there's definitely a lot more to being a parent other than yeah. Financial, you know, prov providing financially or what have you. Yeah, man. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So like after I left there, I'm trying to think of what was like my first job in the plant world. I think it was working with Jeremy dude, hidden agave. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there, I went to Rancho Soledad in Rancho Santa Fe. And then I went to the Botanic Garden from there. And then when I left the Botanic Garden, I just, I I trusted myself more. Like I had way more experience. And then I kind of, I leveraged the name dropping of being a horticulturalist at um, the Botanic Garden to all these like, you know, Richie, Richie, Richies out here. And um, I was charging a good chunk of money doing that, um, doing like my own um, landscaping and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't have a truck. And so it was like hard to like load everything into like a little, you know, um, I had a Ford Fiesta. And so I was just loading everything into the trunk, dude. And it was, it was really difficult, man. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, it was really difficult to do that. And then I kind of got involved working with the city. Uh -huh. So I took a step back from my own, um, business and I don't even really do that anymore. Unfortunately, um, landscaping just full time, like with the state now. Any intentions um, of, of getting there? Um, landscaping? I don't think so, dude. No. Um, I think I'm just going to continue pursuing growing plants yeah. um, and then just selling them. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, it's not something... And stuff, yearlings? Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to... So how I mentioned, like, the retirement with the state. So I want to continue to grow my plants now and then not really sell most of them and hold on to them until I have land and then grow them out. And I want to be able to kind of replicate what Rancho Soledad did for their family. Okay. And um, so like the original owner, Jerry Hunter was notorious for telling people, no, I'm not selling you these plants because he wanted to grow them to larger size and then sell them for more money later. on. Um, yeah. Well, he had, he had time on his side, you know, he didn't have like bills to pay or anything like that. And um in my mind, having a retirement already set up, I can kind of have time on my side, you know, and not be yeah. like, oh, I need to sell these plants for profit, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, I want to be able to do that and then pass it on to my family how he did as well. Um, whether they want to continue the business or, you know, sell it off and do whatever they want. But um, I just want to be able to give them something I didn't have as a, as a child, you know, or as an adult, really, you know, that like generational uh assistance a skill too to pass down yeah man yeah and um my kids they they um they identify plants you know they enjoy plants um whether it's to like humor me and spend time with their dad i don't know but um <laughs> <laughs> you know they um they um like my my younger one when she was like three she'd be like oh that's an agave that's an agave you know and it was really cool to like see that um enthusiasm i guess replicated in my kids too yeah i think some form of it is genetic for sure you know like we're we're born with that love yeah or, or awakened to it at some point in our lives yeah yeah i mean i i feel like we all come from nature you know so for us to like get more in tune with that i think is really beneficial for like the spirit and like health um our society has gone way away from <laughs> you know, things of, of nature and whatnot. Um, and I think that for me anyways, dude, I like to get back to the nature. I like to get my hands dirty and not, you know, participate in high rises and, you know, brunch and shit like that. And not trying, trying to drive an Audi, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm good with my 30 year old truck, dude. Like, you know, I'm, I'm good, man. I feel yeah. that for sure. It makes yeah. sense then that you you traded out your plants, got got rid of the plants so that you can really focus in on those seedlings. And it's like a, a long term uh, commitment that you're making. And that's really cool, man. I, I look forward Thank to you. seeing how it how it turns out, you know? Yeah. You know, one, one day you're going to have some specimens. Yeah. Yeah. And just to have them grown like from my own seed, you know, yeah. is, is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. yeah man.
did you source any of those seeds from like your own other your previous plants too yeah 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 so i had a lot of um like you know seed producing plants and then um when i worked at rancho i would you know kind of take a couple home and stuff like that and um but nowadays i, I really just utilize like mesa garden yeah. um they're a really good resource for you know buying seeds and stuff like that and um they have a really like eclectic collection, um, really rare shit. And um, there's a few other, like I got some Focaria seed from Jeremy the other day. And um, like Josh, how I mentioned him earlier, he's a really good resource as well. Um, I'll be assisting him, not this weekend, but next weekend at the uh, cactus sale in San Diego okay. for uh, the Cactus Club at, down in Balboa Park. Um which is it's a fun place to to be around as well. Balboa that, Park like, is dope. Yeah, well, Balboa Park is sick, but like the Cactus Club when they have their sale, especially in summer, you get such a mixture of people, dude. It's it's crazy to see like who's into plants. Um, you know, you'll have a really old lady and you'll have a really young dude, and like you know, like there'll be like some punker guy, and then there'll be some just you know like some run of the mill like blue collar dude, and yeah. It, all walks of life but we're all kind of coming together for this one commonality and it's it's uh it's really cool to see that it transcends through so many like generations and gender and like you know whatever people identify with it's um i, I think i enjoy that the most honestly most um definitely. yeah it's it's cool dude it's really cool i wonder if the hobby was always like that because i you know when you when you think of of cactus collectors from the olden days i see like you know, old, it's like an older man's hobby, you know, but I yeah. feel like it's our generation that's bringing that in, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I, you know, COVID had a lot to do with that for sure. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, being indoors and there's, there probably still is a stigma of like gardening being like an old lady or Feminine. an old man's. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, dude. Um, or just like an older person too, you know, like yeah. I think age goes with it. Um, and I think how you mentioned our generation kind of is trying to mirror that like older lifestyle of like laid back atmosphere kind of, um, you know, hobbies and stuff. Um, yeah, so it's cool to see, like, you know, like you said, our generation kind of pick up with that um, mentality, you know? Yeah, especially like with it, like you don't have to go very many generations back to see uh what's happening now where people are kind of turning back to the land too you know and everyone's yeah. like getting homesteads and trying to buy land and you know farming growing even if it's like yeah. a micro farm uh tending animals and those kinds of things and it's so beautiful to see that uh i wish that it had been more instilled from a younger age because it it's a we're at a disadvantage not having those skills you know unless you were born into that or big not time. farm you know what i mean yeah big time I think it's a lot different for us here in like SoCal too, you know, like yeah, it's just not yeah. if you're from the Midwest, the you thing. might be in, you might have grown up like that, right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I knew a dude um who he was like in the Marines or whatever and he grew up in like Indiana. And um he was always complaining, like, Oh, my grandpa's trying to give me his farm. My grandpa's trying to give me his farm, like I don't want to go there and da da da. <laughs> I would always be like, dude, what the, what do you mean? Like, I'll take it, like let's go, dude. Like, I don't care where it's at. And, <laughs> he was always just like, well, I worked on it as a kid, so I don't want to do it now, you know? Like, I don't want to, yeah. like, I don't want to tend the land or whatever. Um, and I think that's a lot of human nature, too, to kind of desire what you don't have as well, right. you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's weird like that, dude. Um, I'm trying to get away from that, you know, and, and enjoy, like, what I do have, you know, and be fortunate for what I do have and not focus on what's missing, you know? Sure. It, it makes my life a lot happier for me anyways. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel that completely. And social media can really get you caught up on what you're missing, Dude, right? Yeah, big time, man. Super yeah. influences your thoughts. And like, the, I mean, for me, man, like, I feel like they totally like listen to my conversations and tailor the advertisements and like yeah, yeah. promote just such nonsense, man. It's, um, it can be really detrimental if you're not aware of like what you're putting yourself through, you know, with social media, man. Yeah. There, and there comes uh, something with like being, I feel like even being overly vulnerable and not even just seeing like uh, what other people are doing, but uh, to the extent that you get caught up in like, like posting a lot and stuff that can be to your detriment too, you know, and I've gone through periods of that for sure, where it's just like too much of it is very like counterproductive, you know? 
yeah it takes away from like you know if you're spending time like recording your thing it's like you know taking time and intimacy away from whatever it is you're actually like doing you know are you really present with your hobby when you're you know filming exactly when exactly there's a device between you and your whatever you know yeah yeah and i mean we're all guilty of it but it's something i really long to improve on and i feel like have a little bit you know but um uh, yeah man it's it's wild especially the the them listening to you and, and gearing their advertisements for towards you. you like say something out loud and then the next thing you know there's an ad or if i've seen it where like i, I told my friend hey you're i really like those shoes and they'll be like where'd you get those and then there's an ad for those exact shoes on yeah. the fucking screen yeah, <laughs> yeah man wild. yeah yeah and i mean like you know to be a little transparent i'm kind of going through like marital issues and okay. so it's it's funny to see like all these like relationship shits pop up on my like explore tab you know and it's just like it's uh it's weird man it's weird to see like what's promoted and like it almost in my opinion dude i feel like they promote like fatherless households and they promote like you know dis like disconnect in families and like single moms and like going out and like you know partying and i feel like it only like benefits the you know the one percent or whatever you have whatever you want to call them yeah they want um, consumerism and narcissism they want you to you want go. the next best thing and yep. to always be like you know showing off how hot you are and somebody that's yep. in a committed loving relationship you generally is not going to be doing that right correct <laughs> so like and that's going to pull attention away from your partner so that other men are looking at other women are looking at you yeah man yep. Yeah, yeah it's a big it. distraction too and yeah it's um it's uh i think it's really dangerous if you're not aware of like that you know it's it's really easy to just like shut out the world and just look at your screen right and then yeah, if that's all that's influencing your thoughts like it's just that's that's all it's gonna be man you know it's a dark it's force of energy for sure i felt like these yeah, devices are satanic here's a conspiracy theory you know, <laughs> you know the apple the apple with the bite taken out of it uh for, oh, for apple Eve? is yeah is the is adam and eve's apple <laughs> oh shit <Dang. laughs> we I all fucking got that shit in our pocket yeah wow trippy dude right <laughs> huh i mean um shit, steve jobs dude that guy was uh he was out there he was out there and um you know they say that there's a lot of like um like what the illuminati you know like there's a lot of like devil worship or what have you in like the elite and stuff like that you know and so i mean that's not too far-fetched in my opinion yeah man yeah you know, trippy. I, at this concert do you know the band phoenix mm, no uh, i saw this band that i've always loved like and they've gotten pretty big and during their set in la the other day at the rose bowl they out of nowhere like they sucked me in with one of my favorite songs and then out of nowhere bro there there's this guy in this really creepy uh animal mask and he was holding the head the head it was like a copy of this lead singer's head and then they huh. all they all got down on their knees and started singing towards the earth and huh. holding this thing bro and i'm like what the fuck is yeah. happening you know the main stage <laughs> of the festival and i'm like bro what is happening and i hear about that all the time you know with these artists but i didn't think that this band they're kind of indie i didn't think that they were in huh. kind of things creepy man it made me really uneasy the rest of the night <laughs> huh some like ritualistic type shit yeah bro yeah huh weird yeah yeah i mean well you know there's just as much as people worship you know positive idols there's just as much energy in worshiping negative idols as well you know like it goes both ends of the spectrum yeah absolutely. um yeah you know like i mean the in the bible like they teach you that you know if there's if there's god there's got to be the devil too right so there's no like oh i only like god and there's no devil like it doesn't you know there's good and there's bad and that's it's just kind of what you focus your energy on right like i, I think that that's kind of what it is at the end of the day it's like yeah, man. your focus dude and your energy and where you project it and all that kind of shit yeah if you want to refer to it as as christians you know we'll we'll say angels and demons um some people will say high vibrational low vibrational yeah you know, positive negative energy um you know i i believe yeah there's that. multiple ways to explain it for sure yeah, yeah man, i'm not I've, saying that like you know christianity is the only way or like sure. you know i'm I'm, um, I'm a, believe me i'm a catholic uh okay i, I believe in, in in all of that kind of stuff for sure and i've experienced a lot of of negative energy and and spirits and things like that in my life man and i believe like um 
uh, kind of like how these devices are are influencing and sucking us into that darkness. Uh, uh, I, I believe like addiction has some of that too, where it, yeah. you're you're opening yourself up to like darker forces, you know, and for sure, dude, takes the wheel. Well, like you know the the cartel, um, or like you know just let's just say Latin culture in general is very um, ca Catholic related, you know, and they have like different saints that they pray to, and like you know a lot of like the drug movers they pray over the drugs, dude, you know, and. Um, mm -hmm whether you're aware of that energy or not, it's something that you're ingesting and putting into your body and becoming a part of, you know, again, whether you're willing or aware um, or not, you know? Yeah, and um, I think you hit that right on the head, man, that there's a lot of um, negativity that you're opening yourself up to um, with that kind of usage and stuff. Yeah. You know, and people like you and I that are, have been removed from it, from it and are doing better, all it takes is for us to hang out with that group of people again. And, uh, you'll get yeah. sucked in like that you know <laughs> yeah it's like it pulls you, you can it. yeah it can yeah. yeah for sure yeah um yeah man i um well i mean like so i had i was just about to have like 11 years clean mm. off of um like opiates altogether and um like i mean i posted it on my story so i'm not like kind of ashamed of it and like i feel like my my testimony is like it um i feel like that's why i'm here dude is to kind of like share my story um so like to be transparent like i had a 5150 like i was i was done dude like i was ready to just you know remove myself from earth and um i ate like a whole whole bottle of pills dude like 20 30 of them i don't even know of uh opiates and um i'm still here man like this was just like a month or so ago, like I had a 5150 and then I got out and um, I was still down, you know, and like that's part of the reason why I gave away my plants too, dude, is just to like, you know, I was just like, I'm done kind of a thing. Yeah. And um, so I lost all my clean time um, with that, unfortunately. But um, like I said, man, I feel like my testimony is like um, the reason why I'm still here, dude um because like medically speaking there's no reason why i should still like be talking to you right now you know with how much i had ingested that day and um i've been like drinking heavily and um just got really clouded dude really um clouded in addition to like marital issues and like family shit and you know a lot of like undealt with childhood trauma still kind of pops up and i i um I want to play the victim, you know what I mean? Like, I want to be like, oh, it's this is the reason why, and that's the reason why. And at the end of the day, dude, you got to just kind of like take ownership of your shit and kind of work on it, you know, instead of just like pointing the finger. Yeah, and um, I guess I'm 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 grateful to have that uh, conscious awareness that I have the control to like better myself, you know, instead of like playing the victim and just being oh, you know, down about it and shit like that, you know. Yeah, bro. Well, I'm really sorry to hear that, man. And I'm glad that you're still here and that you made it through that, brother. That's <laughs> really fucking gnarly. Uh, yeah. That's very recent. So, like, thank you for carving out the time to fucking do this after going through something so dark. Yeah. You know, again, I, I really think that, like, and I've, I've thought this for a while, dude, that, like, even, you know, for years that, like, I feel like my my story and my testimony is, is the reason why I'm here and to, like, motivate others to like get out of your funk and like do the best you can in life you know yeah bro yeah like after i got out of um rehab this last time 10 11 years ago like i was really um it was like a work program that i had never experienced before and they give you like a lot of freedom and um there was a lot of like symbolism behind the program as well like it was nine months and they say that it was nine months long because that's how long you're in the womb. Right. Mm. So they're like rebirthing you in these nine months and um, making you a new person before you get out into the world and stuff like that. And um, there was a lot of good shit at that place that I never got at any other program. And I had been through like 12 step behavior mod, medical detox, like, you know, the whole, the whole thing, man. And um it taught me how to live a new life and like the work aspect of it was really beneficial because when you leave rehab you're going to enter society and have a job again and you're going to have to have a you know like a program right like a routine and stuff like that yeah. and so it helped me build that while i was building myself up again at the same time 
And um, I want to replicate that. And instead of like, it was like a summer camp kind of um, setting. Yeah. I want to do it with plants, dude. Like I want to like, instead of you working in the kitchen or like the kids or like cleaning shit up, like I think that people working with plants is going to like light a new fire for other people and like open doors. And like, it's, it's, um, there's kind of like gatekeeping in a sense to the plant world, I feel like. And I want to like knock that shit down and like share it with everybody, dude. Cause like, the peace that I've gotten from growing plants and being involved with nature is something I've never found elsewhere, you know? And I think it's super important to people uh, for people to connect with that or certain people, if they're looking for it, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, that yeah. sounds wonderful. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've talked about like combining forces in the past. I would love to do that with you, you know, and that's, the oh, that's right, dude. That's, yeah. That's the beautiful thing about, uh, if there's a silver lining in, in, in relapses, which I've experienced quite a few of, uh, you kind of get a violent <laughs> reminder and, and it re sparks that that uh, inspiration in you and and really kind of pushes you back towards like service and involvement and, and wanting to get out of yourself, you know. And yeah. uh, they say like when you're sober, your disease is in the corner doing push ups, and you were sober for 10, 11 years, you know. Uh, that unfortunately like all it takes is just to veer off a little bit and and then all of a sudden you're not just where you started but it sounds like you know worse almost then um but when you come out of it it's kind of kind of like alchemy you kind of all that darkness that that you were pushing down and you were experiencing kind of goes the other way you know and you start living in light again and wanting to to be involved with other people that are going through the same thing so that's beautiful and i'm sorry you had to go through that but you know, I'm sure there was a lesson. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, if you look at it though, right, like you could just ignore it and let it be what it is, you know, and not be aware of kind of the lesson that's there, but I'm definitely, yeah. uh, definitely present, you know, and, <laughs> and aware. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, Life's so, a trip. <laughs> so you, now you've been, you've been like what doing meetings and, and staying sober. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I have been, um, since then and, um, meetings is really honestly what has helped me, um, the most, um, like not just like AA, I, I don't know, man, there's typically when I go to like a AA meeting, there's kind of just this crowd of older grumpy people that are just like white knuckling sobriety, you know, and just like muscling through it. And that's not fucking enjoyable at all to me, dude. Like, that is not sobriety, in my opinion, you know? Um, so I've gone to, like, other, you know, 12-step related meetings and, um, like, SLAA, Sex Lovers, Addicts Anonymous, or whatever, that's a, been a big one for me. Um, Codependence, um, Anonymous, you know? Uh, yeah, CODA, yeah. Cool. Um, there's... um. There's a lot of gems that they drop, dude. Like there's more walks of life, I feel like, and people are more um, accepting, I guess, in those um, types of meetings, in my experience, versus like your typical AA meeting. Um, so even if I don't necessarily identify as like a sex addict or like a codependent person or what have you, there's a lot of like again, just gems and knowledge that I've been able to get from those meetings that I've never found um, in AA specifically. And um, not to top down on AA or anybody that goes to them, because I've gotten great knowledge from those as well. Um, but for me and like my walk, you know, like that's, that's my shit right there is those kinds of like other 12 step um meetings definitely i've actually heard that from from a lot of counselors and stuff over the years in the treatment industry a lot of people mm -hmm. recommend that to people that aren't even necessarily going through that um and like uh adult uh adult dependent of uh, alcoholics i think there's another one like that like a yeah, yeah, yeah. child of an alcoholic program yeah um, and because you walk on into, and yeah you walk into other people from other walks of life as opposed to just people that were drinking too much or were doing drugs too much right you've Big got time. all kinds of different people that makes sense man yeah yeah and just like really i think initially giving myself grace and like allowing myself to like be worthy of healing and be worthy of like wanting a better life was kind of 
what I got from them when I started going back, you know, and just to hear like all these people talk about just the shit that they went through, you know, and, but now they're, they're happy with themselves. They're having a good life. And just to like, see, okay, this person's done it. I can, I can do it too. You know, like they've done way worse shit than I have. So like, why can't I muscle through it? You know? And, um, that was really like the most important part for me in the beginning was just, you know, being worthy and giving myself grace and allowing myself to heal and being worthy of healing, you know? Yeah, brother. Yeah. And just to hear people say that was like, whoa, like that's, you know, that's a thing. Like you, <laughs> we can be a piece of shit at one point in time and like, you know, not be again. It was really like cool to hear, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't surprise me, man, that I hear of people with significant time or even just people in recovery uh, relapsing in, in the last few years. Uh, quite a bit of people that I know mm. that were in recovery have been relapsing. It's been a really challenging few years, man, you know, and like we yeah. kind of been separated and I feel like there's not as much of a sense of community and a, a lot of people are bickering over really insignificant things and you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to to establish a, a connection and, and a community these days, man, hmm. something I've struggled with for sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the meetings I go to are virtual. Hmm. Um, it just works better for me because um, my work schedule, you know, it's, it's hard to like participate and stuff like that. So there is kind of that, I guess, absence of like fellowship to a certain extent sure, of going sure. to a meeting in person, you know, um, but I don't know, for me right now, the virtual um, works big time and it's not necessarily the fellowship that I'm after right now, but just more so like the inspirational words and like yeah. the like the routine, man, of just like, all right, well, so for this hour, I'm going to go to this meeting and I know for this hour, I'm not going to get high or I'm not going to have a drink or I'm not yeah. going to fuck, you know, like just that safety of just this one hour, you know, is so it, it, it helps me so much, dude, even if I'm not like oh, I want to go get high, you know, or oh, I want to go have a drink, like just just knowing that I'm in this safe space for an hour. And I can continue that if I so choose outside of this hour, you know, and just kind of taking it chunk by chunk and, and whatnot. Um, it's really beneficial for me as well. Yeah, and accountability yeah. too, right? And having yeah. people to lean on for sure. Yeah, a support system is super helpful, man. Like, you know, there's weird topics in life, like, you know, let's just say porn, for example, that like, you know, you're not going to go talk to your mom like, hey, mom, I'm just I can't stop watching porn. You know, like yeah. that's just a weird fucking topic to talk about, you know, so you have yeah. to like find support elsewhere. And um, if you don't have that, it's it's kind of difficult and it's easy to feel like alone and, you know, stranded on a deserted island kind of a thing, yeah, um, which is a really bad place to be, dude. So like the meetings offer that support in uh, for me anyways. Yeah, I struggle with some of that loneliness too, man. But like, I I've kind of leaned into Mother Nature, and you know, like being in, in the canyon has helped a lot. And I've been getting mm -hmm. up at like five a.m. almost every day before work or mm -hmm. on the weekend sometimes, and just having that routine of like running and and uh, like the sun, watching the sun rise, getting that sunlight yeah. in your eyes in the morning, you know, oh, yeah. it's so good the rest of the day. And then like, there's been like a, a lot of energetic work that I've been trying to do too, kind of trying to keep that darkness away, protecting mm -hmm. myself more, not, not like engaging with uh, every situation. Cause like, I, sometimes I struggle, with this thing. <laughs> yeah, I struggle with this thing, like at work where like, if something's on fire, I want to be the one to go put it out, you know, mm -hmm. and I allow like, everybody shit in and then i go home and i bring it with me and mm. it's like so i've i've been like you know kind of like giving myself more grace and kind of slowing down and going inward I, th I feel like there's a reason uh why i've i'm more isolated and why i decided to come here and you know like those those relationships and and mm. connections socially they can wait you know but well, yeah it's on myself you know for sure so. yeah you know like you can't really care for others if you're not caring for yourself right. kind of a thing you know yeah, you can't give what you don't have you know <laughs> yeah. Most definitely, yeah. yeah well hey man it's been a beautiful conversation i i really appreciate you sharing all that with me man and with the yeah. listeners dude yeah you know like i said man i feel like my testimony is is the reason why i'm here you know it's um it's not all coming together like today or tomorrow or the next day but like i have uh you know faith that it's all kind of I'm where I should be, you know, like, um, 
I'm still here, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, let's uh, let's try to connect more and maybe try to get together in person, like ASAP. You know, let's do something. Yeah. Let's, let's get outside. Yeah. And... I think I'm going to be headed your way um, in a couple weeks or something like that. I, I still have family that lives in like Los Angeles area and, and whatnot, so I need to get out there and do some shit. Yeah, but yeah, I'm totally down. I would love to have you, man, and uh, would love to spend some time. And and listeners too, like if you're local to Los Angeles and maybe you identified with this conversation too, like let's uh, let's try to lean on each other a little more, you know? Oh yeah. And just try to communicate, because I know I know it gets hard, man. And I I I've faced that that wanting to to check out from this world many many times, man. And I still do sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, um, you know, life's really, it's, it's shitty because life is all about getting knocked down and getting back up and then getting knocked down again and getting back up. And, um, even when you're, you know, you've been standing up on your two feet for a while, like life's still going to throw you some punches and you're still going to have to get back up, man. So just to have that like fuel in your tank to, you know, be motivated and continually get up and whatnot is what I had been struggling with. Um, but, you know, um, I've found that motivation through numerous sources and whatnot. And um, connecting with people is definitely what helped me get there. Um, so it's important, again, to have that support, dude. Uh, yeah. 100%. Beautiful, man. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. I appreciate it, brother. If everyone <laughs> could, please like, review, and subscribe to the podcast and hit that share button. We would both appreciate that greatly. Peace. Peace.